Charles County Hospital remained fresh. His mother shot this video in July 2020. I know. Caswell says he was scared and in pain after undergoing surgery <laughs> for a hernia. And I remember them, you know, st uh, strapping me down. Caswell says the surgery was anything but routine. He was expecting to drift off into unconsciousness under general anesthesia. But Caswell says that didn't happen. I just remember the mask it put on my face. I knew I was in trouble when I felt the cold iodine hit my belly and they were and they were scrubbing me off. So like at any second I was waiting to go out, I just all of a sudden got stabbed in my in my stomach. It was just like rusted razor blades. It I mean it was just so bad. You're saying that's what it felt like? Yes. He says there was a towel over his face and he was unable to speak because he had already received an initial paralyzing agent prior to surgery. His attorney, Ken Volstack, explains. He was paralyzed, couldn't move, couldn't blink his eyes, nothing. Couldn't speak. Couldn't speak, can't do anything. Out, just awake, but unable to move. He then was supposed to be given a mask over his face, which was done, and that mask contains what we would probably call knockout gas. It, it puts you under. And that gas was not turned on by the anesthesiologist. They forgot. Do you remember feeling the incision being made in your body? Absolutely. That was bad at the very beginning. It was, there were three. They came in, one in the belly button, and one right here, and then one right here. Caswell is now suing the anesthesiologist, the certified registered nurse anesthetist, and their employer, Washington University. According to the lawsuit, Caswell could feel pain and hear everything that was said in the operating room for at least 13 minutes. I could hear him talking, you know. You your dog this weekend. My heart rate was just jacked. And that's something Caswell's attorney notes in this demand letter to Washington University. He says the medical professional should have realized Caswell was awake based on his vital signs. His heart rate went through the roof. His blood pressure went to what's called hypertensive crisis three, which is what happens to you right before you have a heart attack. And it continued at that rate for 13 minutes without anyone in the operating room noticing it. Volstek provided these medical notes to News 4. The anesthesiologist in Caswell's case noted, a review of the anesthetic record demonstrates a delay in initiating inhalational anesthetic after induction of anesthesia. When it was over, they put in the medical records we made a mistake. We did not turn the gas on until partway through the procedure. So not only does his physical records, that is the way his heart rate and his blood pressure skyrocketed, prove the case, but they admit it. The medical record goes on to say the patient and his mother were immediately informed regarding the delay initiating the inhaled anesthetic agent until after the start of the surgical procedure. And we provided emotional support along with a recommendation for a psychology consult. My sleeping has been terrible. So you're having flashbacks to this? Abs absolutely. How common is this? Not very common, uh, but it, it does occur. Dr. Dan Forrest is a North Carolina anesthesiologist. He's been retained by Caswell's attorney as an expert witness in the case. He says Caswell experienced what's known as intraoperative awareness and that most cases are due to equipment failure not the medical professional for getting to turn on the equipment. So I asked how to prevent it. Is it going too far for the patient to say to the anesthesiologist, hey, make sure you turn the equipment on? Well, I think what's important is that uh, patients should speak with their anesthesiologist prior to surgery. Dr. Forrest says it's important for the patient to understand what to expect. During some procedures, patients might hear conversation or be aware of what's happening depending on the level of sedation. But under general anesthesia, Forrest says the goal is to keep the patient unconscious and unable to remember. It was so scary, I thought I was having a heart attack. For Caswell, it's a nightmare he wishes he could forget. I would have actually rather died on that table, and I think that says something. A lawyer representing Washington University in St. Louis, the doctor, and the CRNA told me via email, Washington University's policy is not to comment on pending litigation matters and is also prevented from commenting due to HIPAA protections afforded Mr. Caswell. If you want to see the entire lawsuit,
So I was sent this video and asked to give my opinion on it. And I just want to explain something about general anesthesia. So anesthesia occurs on a spectrum from you are awake as I am now to general anesthesia, which means you are completely out. What this man had for an inguinal hernia was a general anesthetic, meaning that he should have been unconscious the entire time. During anesthesia, we do what's called induction, which means you go to sleep, and that's usually done through IV agents such as propofol. Then after we insert the endotracheal tube for maintenance of anesthesia, we usually use an inhaled anesthetic like sevoflurane. And what they described in this video is that the anesthesiologist, or probably CRNA in this case, forgot to turn on the inhalational anesthetic after insertion of the endotracheal tube. So now the patient is paralyzed because we give neuromuscular blocking agents during general anesthesia, but he has no gas on board. So he is awake and feeling the pain of the incision and the surgery that is now being performed on him. This condition is called awareness under anesthesia. And it occurs very rarely and usually in circumstances in which the patient's blood pressure is low. Because when the patient's blood pressure is low, we tend to back off on the gas because all of the inhaled anesthetics decrease the blood pressure. So in times where the patient is bleeding out, such as a trauma or they're having some sort of reaction and their blood pressure is unstable during a stat C section for pregnancy, for example, those kind of surgeries have a higher incidence of awareness under anesthesia because those are the instances when we're backing off the gas. And sometimes when I've been in those cases, like stat traumas where the patient's blood pressure is 60 over 30 and we're doing massive transfusion and giving a lot of blood, I will back off on my gas because I need their blood pressure to come up and I will sometimes talk to the patient and the surgeon probably thinks I'm crazy, but I'm at the head of the bed and I'll say to the patient, like, I'm taking care of you. Your blood pressure is low right now. Everything is okay. And people are like, is Dr. Moon like talking to this asleep patient? Like, what is she doing? She's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But the point is that those are the circumstances in which I think the patient may be a little light in terms of their anesthesia. And I talk to them, I give them anxiolytics such as Versed, which is good for people who have anxiety. And I also give fentanyl a little bit, which is a pain medication. But what I'm trying to say is in this case that they're describing, that was not the case. In this case, the anesthesia team admitted that there was a delay in turning on the inhaled anesthetic after induction of anesthesia, which to me is wild. Not wild that you forget something, although we do this every day and it's like tube goes in, you turn on the gas, it's almost like a reflex, but wild that for 10 or 12 minutes, nobody noticed. I mean, when patients are experiencing awareness under anesthesia and they are awake but paralyzed and feeling the surgery, the heart rate shoots up, the blood pressure shoots up. Unless you're asleep at the wheel, it's fairly obvious that the patient is experiencing physiological distress. So I don't know what happened during this delay, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to be settling in this case, if you know what I mean. And I want to also mention that sometimes people think that they were awake under anesthesia, but there is, again, a gradient of anesthesia. And sometimes you have MAC, which stands for Monitored Anesthesia Care, very common for like a colonoscopy or endoscopy. And in those circumstances, you are not intubated. You continue to breathe on your own. And it's a much lighter level of anesthesia than general anesthesia. So if you think you remember and you had a MAC, you were supposed to remember. Now you're not supposed to be in pain or distress and they can certainly increase the level of drugs that they're giving you for sedation. Not all circumstances of I remember a little bit from my procedure or surgery are instances of awareness under anesthesia. But I do believe based on what was reported in this video that this patient did experience awareness under anesthesia and was harmed by this mistake and unfortunately has experienced some psychological distress. So I hope that he feels better and I hope that this video was informational to you. Drop a comment and let me know if you have any other anesthesia related questions.